Alrighty guys, let's go over this slate. Unfortunately, my dumbass was recording the video. And I was about 20 minutes into the video and I had to go to the bathroom. So, so bad. So I had to shut down the video. I don't think it was appropriate to tell you guys I had to go to the bathroom and to pause the video and I'll be right back. But so I just shut down the video. I'll be remaking it. Uh, so let's go over my liners from tonight. Had a really good, uh, not a really good night. Had a bad night outside of NFL. Um, but with the massive day yesterday, I mean, look at all this green from yesterday. With the massive day yesterday, and I binked um, soccer. Um, I'm happy with it. I'm happy with it. So if you're from the YouTube side of things, please come over to this subreddit at DFS Sports. Um, you can ask me whatever you want. I will always respond to you guys. Um, you can ask me questions on pivots, etc. I will respond to you. I will give you an answer to the best of my abilities. Um, if you have... You know, if you ever just want to talk, um, I'm here. So, yeah, um, come over to the subreddit. I do make updates throughout the day with the news that comes out, as you can see here. And, um, yeah, if you ever need to get a hold of me, you can message me on this uh, Reddit, or you can message me on Twitter, at Tori Langley 1992 um, So, yeah, I will have a link to those in the comments. Also, if you are interested in Discord right here, um, I will have a link to that below where I have in-depth player pools or in-depth videos going over each slate. Um, player pools for cash, GPPs, cores for cash, GPPs, much more on top of that, 200 plus people in the Discord that you can talk all sports with. We have people playing the World Cup, we have people playing NBA, NFL, PGA, just, you know, it's, it's, Going 24-7. People talking about sports 24-7. So if that's something you are interested in, I will have a link to that below. So going over my lineups from tonight. The core that I had tonight was Jordan Poole, Mo Bamba, Quentin Grimes, Jonathan Kaminga. Three out of four reached value. Mo Bamba was the absolute complete bust. Um, so yeah, um, three out of four on the core tonight. Just... Uh, You had to avoid a lot of landmines tonight, and unfortunately, I had two spend ups in the in the Orlando game, so that absolutely just cooked me. I also played two lineups tonight. We'll go over my other one, but I rounded out that line this lineup with SGA, Jalen Brown, Bull Bull, and Jared Allen. Um, Jared Allen was absolutely breaking the slate, and then just didn't do anything in the second half. So. That was quite fun, uh, but let's look at my other lineup with uh, same core. Um, Jonathan Kaminga, Mo Bamba, Jordan Poole, Quentin Grimes. As you guys know, I was extremely, extremely high on Anthony Simons. He absolutely smashed at 15% ownership. And I was extremely, extremely, extremely high on SGA this slate. And I kind of like Vooch as a contrarian play. Vooch... <sighs> I'm fine with it. He more than 5x'd. Just wish he got like a block or a steal. He would have ended with the fire emoji at that point. But uh, rounded out this lineup once again. Kind of the same thing. SGA, Bull Bull, Simons, Vucevic. Um, yeah, if I just don't go to those two Orlando guys, it's probably a good night for me. Since my low own plays in both lineups did very, very well. With Simons smashing, with Vooch smashing... It could have been a great night. Um, Quentin Grimes had 18 fantasy points at half, ended with 19. I don't understand how that's possible, but whatever. Um, so, yeah, bad night in NBA, but a really good night in NFL. So, NFL does save the day. This was my cash lineup for tonight. I went Christian McCaffrey, DeAndre Hopkins, Jimmy Garoppolo, Brandon Ayuk, Robbie Gold, Trey McBride. Um, yeah, the core that I had for today was Christian McCaffrey, DeAndre Hopkins, and Trey McBride, all of which reached value, but you needed, like, Jimmy G, you needed Ayuk, you needed Kittle, you needed those guys, um, who outperformed, uh, CMC and DeAndre Hopkins, so, core was good today, but it wasn't an absolute smash like it needed to be. 
And then I shipped a soccer tournament. I don't understand how or why, because I know nothing about soccer or the World Cup, but I will gladly take that. Thank you very much. So, let's go over the slate. On to Brooklyn at Philly. I am extremely, extremely mad because Ben Simmons is coming to Philadelphia and my whole team's out. If you're going to this game, please be safe. It's going to be a crazy one. Um, but yeah, let's go on to this Brooklyn side of things. So Kevin Durant with Kyrie Irving and Ben Simmons and Claxton back. I'm not as high on, um, you know, he's playable, but I think there are more a balanced build or better spend ups on this slate that I do like. You have AD, you have Devin Booker. So Kevin Durant is just a GPP play for me. Same with Kyrie Irving at 9,400. Um, ben Simmons is honestly my favorite play on this team. Now, we're going to have to monitor the starting lineup. Um, if he stays in the starting lineup, I'm more confident in his minutes. And with how he's been playing of late, if, if you're into revenge games as well, um, he'll play you know, the four, he'll play the five. So Ben Simmons is in a really good spot here. Um, I still think he's too cheap with how he stuffs the stat sheet as well. So, I think Ben Simmons looks like a pretty good play at 6.3K. Royce O'Neal, with everyone back, with Claxton, with Kyrie back, I think he's a fine play. I'm not going to be going out of my way to play Royce O'Neal, but if I land on him as like a last piece in, I think I'm okay with it. But with Kyrie and Claxton and Ben all now back, <clears throat> I think his usage rate is definitely going to go down. Now, he's still going to be a good rebounder. He's still going to get a few Excuse me. A few assists, but um, I don't think he's going to continue to average. Eight assists, four assists, ten rebounds, five rebounds. Like, I don't think that's going to happen. So, I'm kind of off Royce O'Neal for now. But if you, if you land on, on him as a last piece, and I'm completely okay with it. Um, assuming Ben... I don't know if I said this already. If Ben Simmons comes off the bench, then he's riskier. And then we'll reevaluate that situation. But if, assuming he starts again, I think he's a... Very good play at 6.3k. Claxton at 5.4k. If he starts or not, we're going to have to monitor it. Um, Minutes-wise for him, I think he at least plays around 20. Uh, but with Ben Simmons now getting this new role, um, I'm assuming Ben Simmons still plays over 30 to 35 minutes with how he's played of late. So I think Claxton's a fine play. Um, I don't think, you know, at 5.4k, I'm going to be running to play him. Especially with Kyrie back, um, it's really going to depend on the starting lineup for me. So we'll, we'll we'll take a wait and see approach here on Claxton, and then I'll make updates tomorrow on the Reddit post. Joe Harris, you guys know the deal here. He's probably going to play around thirty minutes, four point five k. Very reliant on scoring. Does have a ceiling if he's hitting his shots. There isn't a lot of value on this slate, so I think he's playable. I definitely do prefer Seth Curry to Joe Harris. I think Seth Curry. Just has a much higher floor and ceiling. Still pretty reliant on scoring, but he's a guy that can at least get a rebound or two, a few assists. Um, probably plays 25 to 30 minutes as well. So $200 cheaper. Give me Seth Curry over Joe Harris. I think both are playable values, but not going to be going out of, way, out of my way to play either. You to go to Nabe. Um, Minutes-wise for him, especially with Claxton back, probably go down a little bit. I don't think he's going to continue to play 25 and 29 minutes. I also don't think he's going to continue to shoot 70% from the field. So pump the brakes with Yuta. I'm probably off him on this slate. On to the Philly side of things. So Joel B, James Harden, Tyrese Maxey all out. Tobias Harris is expected to be back. So Tobias Harris is going to have to absolutely do everything here. I don't know if you watch Sixers games, but... When Tobias Harris gets his shifts with the second unit, he absolutely crushes. That's why you see those big, like, spurts from Tobias Harris fantasy-wise where he'll score, like, 10 fantasy points in, like, a minute, and then he'll slow down because the starters come back in. That's because he's running the second unit by himself. So that's what he's going to be doing all game here in a good spot against Brooklyn. Well, I don't know if it's a good spot with Ben back, but it's whatever. Um... So, Tobias Harris is just going to have the team to himself here. He's going to play huge, huge minutes as long as the game stays close. Um, I, I really like Tobias Harris here. I think he makes for a really good play. Um, I think DeAnthony Melton at 7.5K is fine. DraftKings did a really, really good job with the pricing here. I definitely do prefer Shake Milton for cheaper, but DeAnthony Melton's going to be asked to do a lot. He'll be the clear number two on this team. With everybody out, um, he'll play huge minutes as well. He'll do, do ball handling too. 
has a pretty high floor, but at 7.5k, I don't know if the ceiling is necessarily there to really, really pay off his price tag, unless he goes for like 50 again, which he could certainly do. Um, but I think he's a good play. I do. Um, I'm just a little bit worried about the ceiling um, at that price. Shake Melton, I definitely do prefer to Melton. Um, just give me the discount at 5.3k. Shake Milton's probably going to play 35 plus minutes too. He's going to do a bit of the ball handling as well. He's he's very aggressive on the offensive end as well. He's not scared to shoot the ball. He's kind of like a mini Tyrese Maxey. So I think Shake Milton looks like a very good play at 5.3k. I think he's still too cheap. Jordan Niang, they're going to need him to do more offensively. He's kind of like a you know, just a three-point shooter, so pretty reliant on scoring. But I think his minutes are going to be pretty secure here. I think they're going to be asked, asking him to play a lot. So, yeah, I think Niang's solid for value. I do. Um, I think he's a fine value play. And then we're going to have to monitor who they start at the five. So it could be Montreal, It could be Paul Reed. I don't know who they're going to start at the five. Um, whoever does start the five, whether it's Paul Reed, whether it's Montrose Harrell, I think makes for a very good value play. Probably going to be one of the better value plays on the slate, so do monitor that news. And then Daniel House probably plays, you know, 25-ish minutes. Probably goes back to the bench with Tobias Harris out. Um, they could do a number of things, actually. House could still continue to start. We'll, we'll see. I, I They could throw Thibel. They could throw Tucker back in. Uh, they could do a number of things. Uh, it's going to be Melton, Shake Melton, Tobias Harris, um, and then one of P.J. Tucker, Daniel House, Matisse Thibel, and then one of Montrose Harrell or Paul Reed. So just monitor that situation. Would prefer, um, not going to get to Thibel if he starts, not going to get to P.J. Tucker if he starts. Um, but if Daniel House starts or comes off the bench, I think he's a fine value. On to Sacramento. So, Fox, Sabonis, I think, are in play for GPPs. I think there are spend-ups that look better on this slate. They're not smash plays. Um, I do like the spot here up against Memphis. Um, pretty sure everyone on Memphis is out again here. So, they should be able to feast. I don't have a preference on which I like more between Fox and Sabonis. But I think they're fine GPP plays. Not going to be going out of my way to play either. Kevin Herter, Barnes, I think, are appropriately priced. I do prefer Herter to Barnes. Malik Monk's minutes are all over the place, so just a GPP play for me. And honestly, my favorite play from Sacramento, not a lot of value on the slate, might be Keegan Murray. Played 35 minutes last game, shot 4 of 10, went for 13, 2, and 1. Not a pretty play, but there isn't a lot of value on the slate. His price went down. If we're expecting 35 minutes again from Keegan Murray at 4.4K, I definitely think he is a solid value play. Terrence Davis is basically out of the rotation. Can't go there. Trey Lyles at 3.4K isn't playing enough for me to go there. And I think that is it for Sacramento. On to the Memphis side of things. So John Moran is doubtful. Desmond Bain is out. Jaron Jackson Jr. is now back. So Dylan Brooks at 7.3K. Kind of the same thing I was saying with Melton. I like him. He's going to shoot the ball 25 to 30 times probably. But I... I <laughs> Listen, I have trouble paying 6.5K for Dylan Brooks. Now you're asking me to pay 7.3K. I think he's a solid play. It's going to be an ownership thing for me. If Dylan Brooks is going to be low-owned, then I really like him for GPPs. If he is going to be popular, I am fine fading him at this price tag because he's scoring reliant. Now, at this price tag of $7,300, he is going to have to put up 50 fantasy points to really, really hurt you, so... Ownership thing for me, he was a must-play for me at 6200 Now he is $1,200 more expensive. So I'm on the fence. It's going to be an ownership thing for me. Regardless, not considering ownership, I think Brooks is solid. Jaron Jackson Jr., I wish we would get confirmation on minutes limits. We're probably not, though. So if he's only going to play 25 minutes, now the price went up almost $1,000. Just a GPP play for me. But if we get news that he's going to like get a minutes increase to like 30 minutes, then at 6.4K, I think he'd be an interesting GPP play. And I would like him for GPP. So something to monitor there. John Contra, 6.2K has been phenomenal. Um, I'm not in the business of paying this price tag for John Contra, but he has been phenomenal. If you want to ride the hot hand, go for it. I think he's just there for me. 
<clears throat> Tyus Jones, I think, is one of the best point per dollar plays on the slate. Had a four game last game. I'm not worried about that. I'm fine going right back to Tyus Jones. I think he makes for one of the best plays on the slate, even at 5.9K. Give me all of the Tyus Jones tomorrow. Steven Adams, I kind of like for value. Like the spot here up against Sabonis. Probably plays close to 30 minutes. Good rebounder, you know, good defender. Double double upside. Uh, I think they're going to ask of him two stops of bonus here. So I like Steven Adams quite a bit for value. Santi probably goes back to the bench, and then I don't think I'm getting to anyone else. On the Detroit side, this slate is fucking loaded with just amazing plays. So Kate out, Stewart out, Sneak Bay out, Jaden Ivey at 7K. I still like at this price tag. Um, he's just their clear guy right now, playing huge, huge minutes outside of this game. He was in foul trouble. I think normally he's going to play 35 plus minutes, going to shoot the ball around 20 times. Uh, yeah, Jaden Ivey I still think looks solid at 7K. I think Bojan is very, very safe. He's kind of like Dylan Brooks where he's going to shoot the ball 20 plus times. Um, Bojan has been their uh, second best player. And it's just these two doing everything for the team right now. So with no Sadiq Bay. I think Bojan, I think Ivy. I went to both last slate. I think both are pretty good plays here once again. Killian Hayes at 5K. Minutes are all over the place, but if we're going to get 30 plus minutes of Killian Hayes, you know, a guy that could stuff the stat sheet, not going to be efficient when he's out there, but we don't care about that. He's a good point per minute guy. He's going to stuff the stat sheet with not a lot of value. I think Killian Hayes is a pretty good play on this slate, assuming he continues to start at the point. Alec Burks is the pivot off a possible popular Killian Hayes. But at 4.8K, he is just there for me. But um, he's probably going to play close to 25 minutes, except for when I play him, he just randomly gets benched. I'm fine with Burks, but uh, I think the price is about right for me. Bagley, Dern, probably split the center minutes. Bagley, if he can just stay out of foul trouble, he's going to nuke one of these slates. I like the matchup for him, so I kind of like Bagley here. Just be prepared. He's probably going to get into foul trouble. And then Duran, I think, plays around 20 minutes as well. So I think both the bigs here for Detroit both look like good value plays. I don't have a lean on which I like more. I think Bagley plays more if he can stay out of foul trouble. But I think Duran will be more productive. So um, I like both for value. I do. Um, Liver started but barely played. So hard for me to go there. And then they dusted off. Kevin Knox, um, so I don't think I can do that either. Let's go to Denver. Like I said, this slate is just loaded. Jokic, Murray, uh, Bones, or no, Jokic, Murray, Aaron Gordon, no, sorry, Jokic, <laughs> Jokic, doubtful, Murray, doubtful, Aaron Gordon, questionable, Bones, Howland, probable. Sorry about that. So, with Jokic, Murray, both going to be out, most likely. Um, that just means more usage for guys like Bruce, MPJ, Aaron Gordon if he plays, Bones Highland. So, Bones Highland is 6.7K. I don't think he's a smash anymore. Okay. Um, I still think he's an okay play. I do prefer the price on Bruce Brown, who is going to start the point guard position, who probably plays 35 ish minutes. Might get some blowout run too. So, uh, if I had to pick between one, it would definitely be Bruce Brown. I wouldn't play both together now they are both priced up in my opinion i think point per dollar i'd prefer bruce yeah i take that back you can play both together still in my opinion but i would probably pick one at these prices i do prefer bruce i think bruce makes for a very good play tomorrow michael porter jr has just been god freaking awful if you have played michael porter jr the past two slates at low ownership i feel for you I'm fine going right back. I'm fine playing Michael Porter Jr. until he has a good game, especially if Aaron Gordon's um, out. If Aaron Gordon's in, I prefer Aaron Gordon. I think Aaron Gordon would be an absolute smash play if he plays. Um, so, love Aaron Gordon if he plays. Michael Porter Jr. himself, if Aaron Gordon's in, I still think would be solid. I do. Um, and then I still would really like Bruce. I think Bones would look good still. Um but, yeah, modern the Aaron Gordon news, that is pretty big. I think if he plays, he just looks really, really good. KCP is playable. He'll play huge minutes, but pretty reliant on scoring. Has a ceiling if he's hitting his shots. DeAndre Jordan just randomly played 34 minutes last game. Um, I don't know if he, they're going to do that again. I really don't. But I think he's a solid value play. I do. Um, not a lot of value on the slate. 
I think it makes for a pretty good value play. Um, Zeke Naji at the flat min played 16 minutes last game. Um, I don't think we're going to get that many minutes from DeAndre Jordan again. So I think Zeke Naji more often than not is probably going to play around 20 minutes. So I think he's playable at 3K. And then, uh, yeah, especially with Jeff Green out. Uh, so on to the last game here, Lakers at Phoenix. If LeBron's in, I'm just going to stay away from this team. But if LeBron's out, I mean, Anthony Davis has just been absolutely phenomenal. I don't know how you fade Anthony Davis if LeBron's out. I just, I feel like he becomes an auto play with how good he's been with LeBron out. Just doing absolutely everything. I, I don't care about the matchup up against Phoenix. If LeBron's out, I absolutely love Anthony Davis here. I think Russell Westbrook would be fine too. I think Lonnie Walker would be fine. I think Austin Reeves would be a good value play if LeBron's out. Probably wouldn't go to anyone else, but yeah, keep an eye on that LeBron news for sure. And then we already got news, Chris Paul is out. So Devin Booker is my favorite spend up on the slate right now. I absolutely love Devin Booker up against this terrible Lakers team that's playing super fast, playing no defense. Give me all the Devin Booker with no Chris Paul. Campaign at 7.1K, but I think it's pretty solid, solid too. These two guys are going to lead the offense. They're going to have the highest usage rates on the team. I like both quite a bit. I prefer Devin Booker for 2,000 more, obviously. But if you can't get to Booker, I think Payne's fine. I think DeAndre Eaton's a fine play. Um, more often than not, I think at this price tag, he's priced appropriately. Bridges is going to play huge, huge minutes. You guys know this. Um, 6.6K, I don't think he really has a high ceiling at this price tag. But I think he's a fine and very, very, very safe play. And I like Torrey Craig for value at 4.9K. Torrey Craig's been phenomenal. You know, guy, good rebounder, guy, stuffed stat sheet. Uh, but no Chris Paul. I expect his minutes to stay around the same. Expect him to play around 30 minutes, especially with no Crowder, no Cam Johnson, no Shamet. So those minutes are very, very secure for Torrey Craig. And I like him for value. So, yeah. Um, if there was a guy to take a shot on the bench, it, it would be Damian Lee, who probably plays for 20 minutes. Um, I'm fine with it. I don't think he's a bad play. I definitely think you could do worse. So I hope this video helped you guys out. And yeah, have a good night.